big moron! <laughs> hey, moron! Duh! <laughs> look at me! I'm the whoa water boy, duh! Here we go. Good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Can you believe that tomorrow we have our first game in London, 9.30 a.m. 9.30 a.m. The festivities start. Uh, we're going to try and live stream the whole day. So if we start out at 9.30, that may be a 14-hour live stream. Now, I do. I, I may need to make a couple of breaks where we'll stop for a minute, reboot the computer, and come back because the computer might need rest. We're talking about 14 hours. But I'm going to get some rest. No, I'm not. I'm lying to you. I'm lying to you if I'm saying that I'm going to get some rest. No, we're going to go ahead and get ready for tomorrow because tomorrow is game day. So for the Dallas Cowboys, um, interesting take yesterday by Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones, who yesterday was one on 105 The Fan, and he was talking about, uh, was asked about a soft rebuild. And a lot of people have gone up in arms. Oh my God, we're doing a soft rebuild. Well, yeah, but I would say that don't we do a soft rebuild every year because when you let go starters and you bring in new guys, when you change the guard, you, nobody really needed to say we were doing a soft rebuild. You didn't bring back Biotis. You ended up starting a rookie center who was a guard. You end up taking Tyron Smith. Mind you, Tyron Smith is kind of struggling tomorrow, and we can watch some more tomorrow. He's already given up three sacks this year, and Aaron Rodgers, mind you, also looks like he's spent as well. But be that as it may, you've got a rookie left tackle who, you know, th there's a lot of people that are kind of jumping off of the Tyler Guyton train and everything else. And there's some penalties. We, we know what works against them right now is when guys go hard on the inside. Pause. When they crash hard inside, that's the ones that he has problems with. He's pretty good at keeping them from going on the outside. But that's where he ends up getting, you know, kind of behind, and that's where the holding penalties come. Those are things that can be cleaned up. I want you to understand that we're talking about guys that have only played four games in the NFL career. Four games. Um, when you say a soft rebuild, when you start thinking about um, overshown starting, that's a soft rebuild. When you let go of a Stefan Gilmore because you believe in Seelan Carson, that's a soft rebuild. Um, the thing I would say about a rebuild, though, when I think about the red brick house, a rebuild, what you do when you rebuild something is you first get rid of all the stuff that's no good. You get rid of all the stuff that is no good in there. So in the red brick house, of course, we needed to reuse as much as possible to try and keep it as historic and make it look much like it originally did because we wanted to preserve a lot of the stuff. But if we're talking about a house that's only 10 or 15 years old and it's been just, just you know, laid waste, we're doing a rebuild. We're going to rip out. If there's flooding, we're going to rip out all of the flooded walls, you know, the drywall and the insulation and things like that. Or if it's an older house and it's got bad wiring, we're going to rip out all the wiring stuff. So you have to clear everything first before you can actually rebuild. So when you say a soft rebuild, to me, in my mind, that's more of we're going to change a few things as opposed to a complete rebuild. We had to do kind of a complete rebuild of this house, okay? We, we couldn't just paint over on the plaster. We had to replaster the walls, okay? We had to stand the floors down and fill them in places. We had to rip out the wiring, the knob and tube. Well, actually, we left a lot of the knob and tube wiring for aesthetics. But we had to run all new wiring, all new plumbing. That's a complete rebuild. And that's what people had basically talked about the Cowboys doing next year. Soft rebuild is really more like reloading. That's what it is. You reload some of the talent. 
So the Cowboys have reset the clock on the offensive line. There's going to be growing pains. The Cowboys have reset the the defense with younger players for the most part, with the exception of uh, Eric Kendricks. So I don't know that this is the worst thing to get bent out of shape because uh, the, the thing that you look at, though, when you say rebuild is bringing in some new pieces. And that's where you look at it and say, you know, maybe you get some young stud receivers. I can understand not going through and maybe Devontae Adams and looking and saying, that's a big piece of money. That's kind of an old piece that you're putting in here. Technically, what you really want to do is, like the Cowboys did in the 90s, they got a group of young guys together. And they were able to let that group of young guys grow and develop together. So when they were hitting their prime, they were all hitting their prime about the same time. And that's ultimately what you want to do. Now, you do need to have a mix of some veterans and things in there um, that can help teach the young guys and stuff. But for the most part, you look at the Cowboys, they just, just about started all over. You know, from Michael Irvin to Emmett Smith and all that from like 88 and on is where those guys were all drafted. By the time you got to the early 90s, those guys had learned the system, been in there long enough that they're now studs, and they're in the prime of their careers, and that's why they were great. So I don't know that this is the worst thing that Jerry Jones could say, um, that it's a soft rebuild. Um, I'm just waiting for some of the building because when I look at our running game right now, that's still a work in progress. We have rushed for less than 80 yards in each of the last three games. And that is a travesty for a Dallas Cowboy team. I want you to understand something. As great as Troy Aikman was, when Emmett Smith rushed for 100 yards, they were like butter. I, I don't have the numbers, but I think they won like 90% of their games. When Zeke, excuse me, when... Emmett Smith did not run for 100 yards, then it was more like 500. The difference of having a running game for everything that it does, because it's a cause and effect. If you're able to run the football, you force the defense to put more men in the box. You might have eight men in the box to stop the run. When you are worried about stopping the run, play action becomes that more, much more um, useful because they're so worried about stopping the run that that fake dive gives you another little split second for that receiver to make a move, uh, and so on. So we need to get this thing going. Now, Zeke Elliott quoted as saying, I think staying on schedule, not getting behind the chains, Elliott said, we can't shoot ourselves in the foot with penalties, and obviously just stay in the game, can't get down. Okay, And I'm going to say that he does have a point there because – Watching the last game against the Giants, okay, I know people are going to say the Giants suck and they can't do anything, this, that, and the other. Mind you, Washington did not get into the end zone against them. As much as everybody is now on the Washington bandwagon, Washington had to settle for seven field goals against that team. And, you know, to, to finally win that game, they won 21-18, the battle of the field goals. Um, so... I'm going to say that there were some good runs in there. You saw Zeke run for six, seven, eight yards a couple times, but they were called back by penalties. Addressing the penalties, and that this is it's like another cause and effect. If you get a holding call and now it's first and 20, you ain't running the ball too much more after that. You've got to pass. If you're able to pick up three, four, five yards on first down, you're going to start running more and you're going to get into more of a rhythm. And I'm not sure that the whole uh, running back by committee with this group is allowing anybody to get into a groove because we're just not getting enough runs. That may be the case. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I do want to say, oh, my God, JMU. JMU plays today um, against um, Louisiana Monroe. I've never heard of Louisiana Monroe, but they're playing them today, and they're a 15-point favor. Favorite shout out to JMU, and uh, hopefully they'll get a great big win again, and we'll see where it goes there. But for our Cowboys, we are battered, bruised, beat up, and in need of a bye week badly. And we're going to Pittsburgh, which is always a tough place to play. The last time the Cowboys played there in 2016, 
it was basically the Cowboys have no chance in hell. Dak Prescott was a rookie. Uh, ben Roethlisberger was still slinging the rock like crazy. And at that point, no rookie quarterback had won against Big Ben. Zeke Elliott had about 115 yards, and it ended up being a shootout with uh, Big Ben and Dak Prescott, and the Cowboys came home with the victory. And I believe that this is one of those games that our younger guys are going to start getting a little bit better here. And this is where we're going to be reliant with this soft rebuild for guys like Marshawn Nealon, for guys like Overshone, for guys like Mozzie Smith to be able to step up on that defense. And I believe this is, and, and I'm probably crazy, knowing that Pittsburgh is more of a running team and that their offensive line is beat up as well, that this might be the thing that changes that actually helps the Cowboys. Because sometimes you don't change things until you're forced to. Micah Parsons is an incredible player. He's an incredible pass rusher. But as a run stopper, you know, if you're running right at him, it's not that great. But you play differently because you have a Micah Parsons. Now, what's going to happen is the Cowboys are going to play a little differently now because Micah Parsons is out. And this is where we're not going to be relying on one guy. We need all of these guys to step up. And this may... Um, this may end up making us a better team in the long run. We'll have to wait and see on that one. So let's get ESPN's take on the Cowboys here versus the Steelers. Big play. All right, I want to look at this game from a lot of different directions. First off, let's hear Dak talking about all the injuries and everything else, what he feels he needs to do against one of the best defenses in the league. I mean, I don't break the huddle and say I've got to go be Superman here, but – I'm, I've been able to, you know, you break some be. tackles. I've been able to do some things that have helped people out. Um, as I said, use Wrong my one. feet more, make the throws. So I can tell you my best is damn sure I'm on the brink of it, and, and I feel like I'm stepping into that damn sure coming. So he says he doesn't need to be Superman. Do you believe that? Does Dak have to be Superman this week to have any chance against Pittsburgh? Yes, I think he does. I think he has to be a guy that breaks the huddle and thinks, I got to go be Superman. Because this is, look, it, you, you, you're down the two best edge rushers you have. You don't have Brandon Cooks, and your wide receiver room is already thin. You want to tell me you like, you know, Ryan Flournoy and Jalen Brooks and these guys can step up? It's going to be on the quarterback to make sure that happens. There's no run game. Like, it's got to be a Dak. Dak has to do what Kirk Cousins did last night. Man, Dak has to be MVP. Period, point blank. Not just for this game, for this team to win this season. Dak has to play at the same level he played last year, that. but more. Because you don't have the same people at your disposal. You don't have a run game. You don't have a defense that's turning the football over at this high rate. That's what this team was built on. This team used to turn the football over, and Dak Prescott turned that into points. You don't have that anymore. So this whole thought process, I can't go out there and be Superman. Hell, you ain't got to be Superman, but you got to be the dude that they paid eight $80 million dollars guaranteed mm -hmm. when he signed his name he got 80 million dollars that said to me that sometimes when I need you to be Superman you are capable of being Superman so giving me this team first and we got to do it all together and I don't feel like it's all on my back answer that ain't the answer I want the answer I want is hell yeah it's all on my back <laughs> Micah ain't playing Demarcus Lawrence ain't playing well then right? Kellen Carson ain't playing right offensively all we have is CD Lamb just tell the truth we ain't got a lot so I got to do a lot. I'll tell you what, though. To me, the X factor in this game is Jake Ferguson. You know, last year he had 71 sure. catches. He has zero touchdowns. If Graz won't let me trade for uh, Devontae Adams in Dallas, you have to get better from within. And where can you get better from within, Greeny? This guy right here, Jake Ferguson. Play. And last week, Pittsburgh really struggled on third down. Great staff from Hembo. They allowed more third down conversions last week, eight, than they did their first three weeks combined. So to me, if Dallas wins this game, if Dak plays well, they're gonna, we know they're going to take CD away. Jake Ferguson has to be a difference maker. Bart, here's the issue, I think. If you say the Cowboys, is there a bigger problem the offense or the defense? The answer is yes. Right? I mean, <laughs> that's, that's the reality of the situation. We haven't even mentioned that. Well, you briefly mentioned yeah. the defense. Yeah. But that defense was bad with their two best players. Now, right. what is this going to look like against a Pittsburgh team that, while I know they haven't been quite running the ball the way we expect them to, we know that's their identity. This feels like a terrible matchup to me for that Dallas defense. Well, he says he doesn't have to be Superman. Well, he better not be Blank Man. Because if he's Blank Man, he's going to get crazy. 
criticized, right? <laughs> Listen, we don't make excuses, right? Because when you get that type of money, when you're the highest paid player, nobody feels sorry for your lack of weapons. Yeah. It's supposed to be that's the reason why we paid them, right? And when they're we talk stupid. about Josh Allen, no number one receiver. Nobody cares. Get it done, right? We talk about Lamar Jackson when he had his la- lack of receivers. Nobody cares. Get it done. When Jalen Hurts this, this year, no receivers. Yep. Nobody cares. Get it done. Joe Burrow took a team to the Super Bowl with no offensive line. Get it done. When you get paid this type of money, this is the reason why you, you validate why you're the highest paid player because you can be a force multiplier. Last year, we talked about all the weapons, all the things that um, Patrick Mahomes didn't have. But he proved this is why you pay yeah, me the money. money because when the environment isn't isn't perfect, Ideal, yeah. like it's normally never not perfect, this is the reason why you show why you're that dude. If they lose, he needs to have a Jordan Clark game. When my son was playing soccer and he was little, I remember they lost the game 6-4, to four, and they're walking off the field, and his kid's like, Jordan, I don't even know who won. And he said, they won. He said, they scored six, I scored four. <laughs> right? you know what I'm so, hey, so straight up, he needs to have a Jordan Clark game. Roscoe Jenkins, team yeah. of me. Here's what we'll say. Dak, you can't expect him to be uh, Patrick Mahomes, right? Because nobody is, except maybe Justin Fields. Can we put C32 oh, oh, up on the screen? Oh, Are you wondering oh, how well oh. Justin Fields has been playing? Justin Fields' QBR, his completion percentage are basically identical to those of the best quarterback in the league. And if you look at the turnovers at the bottom Mm. of the screen, Pat Mahomes has five turnovers. You know what the dirty little secret is? Dirty is the wrong word. You know what the the Pat Mahomes has five interceptions is right now? Justin Fields is playing great. I'm trying to not make it a secret, right, Greeny? I'm trying to let the Um, world know that Justin Fields is playing good football. And even in looking at those stats, I want people to think about this. It's not that Justin Fields has this litany of weapons to throw the football to Mm -hmm. or to use or that are at his disposal. This team is 3-1, and not in spite of Justin Fields, but because of Justin Fields. Because Justin Fields has protected the football. Because Justin Fields, when given opportunities, has pushed the football down the field accurately, used his legs. And if not for an errant snap last week, Mm -hmm. they have an opportunity to beat the Indianapolis Colts when the defense wasn't at its best. And so, to me, it's like this is the week, right? If there was any week for the Steelers' offense to be dominant, right, to to show the world that it's not just the defense, it's not just T.J. Watt, it's not just Mike Tomlin and his leadership, it is this week against a Dallas Cowboys team that is ready for the taking. You know, uh, one thing I would just add to it, we talked about all offseason, I know you were really high on them as well, but – Arthur Smith is the perfect coordinator for Justin Fields because it plays to his strength. He's just not running it, like you said, indiscriminately. He's running it in a purposeful way, and that sets up these deep play-action shots, and it really uh, suits his strengths really well. And to me, like you said, when Dallas loses 47% of their pressure players Sunday night, this is a great matchup for them. If I'm Pittsburgh, I'm starting to think about an extension because, remember, oh, they got him. He's whoa, got a one year deal. No. Games. Why are you, make, why are you why, making why? that face, Bart? L- listen, listen. I know I'm buck nasty, the resident hater, <laughs> right? But listen, let's keep Long it in, as you know. L- listen, let's keep it in context, right? They have played the JV so far. Oh. Like I'm not paying Justin Fields long term. Not yeah. as, not when that guy Sam Darnold is out there and he's going to be a free agent next year. And I have an opportunity to get somebody. For this offensive planet. fit, you think listen, Bartholomew? Bartholomew. Sam Darnold? Because so Who's so Justin Sam? So Justin Fields four games with only George Pickens. I get Justin all Fields that. is is less to you, says says you can't sign him. Not but, extension. But Sam, but Sam Darnold is the guy you should go after, who we've seen play in other places and not be good in three well, other stops. Well, I'm but because he's had no. four games in a place that we watched um Josh Dobbs play good in <laughs> for a couple of weeks. Right. With Justin Jefferson on the team. I am so Jordan Addison with you. No, Mr. And, Clark. and the best offensive Mr. coach. And Aaron Jones. Mr. I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and end this right here. Now I will give you that um, Justin Fields is, you know, doing okay right now. And as they, th- this is how they, they kind of skew the numbers. Um, I want you to understand that the Steelers scored 18 points week one against Atlanta, okay? And he threw for 156 yards. They got a win against Denver, 13-6. to six. They scored 13 points. He had 117 yards, and they scored 20 points against the Chargers, where he threw 245 yards. They lost to Indianapolis um, and ended up being 312 yards. 
although you might say some of that might have been garbage time, okay? Um, granted, you know, again, he's got three TD passes, three TDs, and one interception, okay? And they put up there that Pat Mahomes does have five interceptions, which is a lot. Um, but be that as it may, understand that Pat Mahomes has played Baltimore, Cincinnati, Atlanta, and the Chargers, and scores a lot more points and does have six TD passes. I'm just saying that, you know, I'm not trying to belittle what Justin Fields has done. But at the moment, you got to look at the competition that they're doing, and let's put it all in context. You know, when you're throwing a yard more per average per pass, like Pat Mahomes is, you're going to have more turnovers. And when you're not a ball control offense, when you are more reliant on the pass, you're going to have more turnovers. Just saying, just saying. But we'll see. We'll find out tomorrow. He's got a chance to go against the Cowboys team defense that is definitely depleted. And um, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. As always, I appreciate you guys. And uh, I'll see you all at 5 o'clock for our members call-in show. Peace out.